Thank you so much. Thank you. And I want you to stretch your hands to this offering, okay? And I want you to think about the people that gave the offering. And God said there's a great return when you support situations and people and ministries and things. There is great rewards. What you do when you give an envelope with a check or money, you've given your life. It took time out of your life to make the money that you have put in this envelope. So you're not just sewing a paper bill or a silver coin. You are giving of your life. Think about that. You're giving your life that a child will eat. That an old man on the street, forgotten about by everyone, will find love in someone's arms telling him about Jesus. Your life in this envelope goes to pray for the other parts of the world. This envelope is very, very important to the kingdom of God. So as we pray for the offering, think about those that have given it. Some, it could be their last penny. Some, that it could be just what was in their pocket. And some, it's everything that you have. It's your life. It's our life. And so, Father God, we take these envelopes and we lift them high to you. They contain what our heart is and what we believe and what we know that will happen because of it. And Father God, I ask you to multiply again and again and again and meet every need of this day and those to come with the life that all of us have shared in these envelopes. Father, bless the man and the woman and the child that thought about what they were doing before they gave. They thought maybe good thoughts, maybe why do I have to do this? But God, turn it around, turn it around because it's life. They've given life and that is something that never can be replaced. Money will grow, money will be given back, things will be given back, but the life, the time that it took us to make the money that's in those envelopes will never come back. We can never replace that life. So God, use it to the fullest. Use it to the fullest. Use this money to the fullest. Multiply it and multiply the years of those that gave. Father, bless them abundantly starting right now more than what they could ever think of or more than they could ever believe. Father, I give you praise and I give you thanks for life. Life that radiates
radiates through this entire building. Life that is so big, it's leaching out to the neighborhoods and the highways and the byways. Life, Lord God, life that will resurrect any man or any woman from the dead. Life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask, and we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, guys, where, where are those two? I saw the funniest women. They had freckles, Maeve, and uh, they had the goofiest clothes. But cute as a bug. Where in the world are those two women? Oh, my gosh, here they come. Oh, my gosh. Come, 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 on, come on over here. And who are you two chicks? Well, they all can't hear you. You got to use the microphone. She get her own. Is that okay? Oh, sure. Can I use this one or do you need one? No, no, you go ahead. Thank you very much. You're so kind. Where are you from? Honey, I'm from a little town in Missouri called Ferguson and Normandy and St. Louis. Well, wow. you got some good How personality. Can be, How can she be from all them places? There's a lot of places to be from. Well, I don't rightly know. Well, we're from the hills. Yeah. I don't know which hill, but they call us Hillbilly. <laughs> my name's Lindy Lou. And my name's Lindy Lou, too. Because Mama didn't have much imagination. Oh, she did. She's too busy raising all them kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, we won't sing a song. Is that okay? Song. All right. We're going to sing a song for y'all. You like songs? You'll like this song. It's all, all right. about us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is how it goes. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble. When you're perfect in every way, I can't wait to look in the mirror. I get better looking each day. To know me is to love me. I must be a wonderful girl. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble. But I'm willing to give it a whirl. Oh, I got all tied up. Look at Well, you got a little twisted up. I heard you do a dinner. Honey, I do. Oh, we found something for your dinner. Yes. We got a roadkill grill. Well, you did. Oh, Pastor Alex oh, found it this morning on the church steps. Yeah. It was a squirrel. It was. It so, was a squirrel. Yeah, we make Mama's this uh, squirrel lip chip yeah. dip. Oh, squirrel lip chip dip. Yeah. Yeah, and our mama told us a little, a little poem. Oh yeah. Um, that wasn't beans, boys. That you had. That wasn't beans that you had on your trisket last night. That was my squirrel lip chip dip. That's right. And then there's a rigamortis tortoise. On the half shell. Now we didn't know if he was a dead or, or homeless. Homeless, yeah. That's right. I think this lady here knows the script. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to tell us, but we ain't listening. <laughs> and then we have a, another specialty, Tom the Toad oh, a la mode. Tommy. My friend Tommy. Yes, yes. Do you know about Tommy? Do you know about Tommy? Do you know what happened to him? We'll tell you now. It goes like this. Oh, Tom the Toad. Oh, Tom the Toad. Why did you jump out on the road? Oh, Tom the Toad. Oh, Tom the Toad. Why did you jump out on the road? You did not see the coming car. Now you're spread out. Toad, oh Tom the Toad, why did you jump out on the road? 
Let's give him a great big God bless you, will you? Is that the neatest thing? I'll tell you, you could go forever and never find a church that a Jewish man comes up and makes all the announcements. <laughs> that the hillbillies talk about Tom the Toad. You'll never find another church that you can wear whatever you want and say whatever you want and do whatever you want and all praise Jesus one together and love one another and share your sad times and your good times. You'll never find another church that loves so much and gives so much and does so much. You'll never find another church and we can go on and 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 on. On and there's no end. There's no end of the thoughts and the imaginations and the good things and the groups and the things that they're helping people with. People, people like every one of you. Some are off the street. Some have been on the street. Some do the streets. Some run in the streets. But we're all gathered together loving one another. Is that amazing? Do you know what I love the most? Those that normal people pass by in the daytime walking down a street. Now walking here and their lives are changed and there's no one that chains them down and forces them to read and to do this and do that and do the other thing. It's by the spirit of the living God that draws them in like a magnet. And our lives are changed. And once we were dirt bags and the next, we've been promoted to the best in the land. We have been promoted so much that now we can walk through the kingdom doors for an eternity. God has changed our lives so much. How did that happen? How did that happen, John? I don't know. This, this congregation is made up of people in need. And they've walked in here and found a place with every answer. Jesus. Jesus. This one's praying for a baby. And all of a sudden, the belly gets big and the baby appears. This one over here is praying for a job. And all of a sudden, he gets a job. This one over here is praying for a home. This one over here is praying for a loved one that's dying. This one over here is praying for their hearing. This one over here is praying for their speech. This one over here is praying to be able to walk. This one over here is being prayed for that they can run. And do you know the answer is here. The answer is here. You don't have to go anywhere else. You don't have to go to the water. You don't have to da, 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 da. I found a new pill. I found a new vitamin. I found a new kick. I found a, listen to this, listen to that. It's so simple. Most folk miss it. Catherine Gulman said every day of her life, every day she would say, oh, my dear, Jesus is so simple. Most folks miss him. You cannot miss him in this place. He's number one. He's primary. He is everything. He is our now. He is our future. He is our health. He is our life. He is our eternity. He is everything. Right here. 
I want you to close your eyes for one moment. There's a couple of people here. Is this John? Joe. This is Joe. Hi, Joe. How are you, Joe? I'm so glad to see you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I w I'd like to talk to you after we finish. I want you to close your eyes, please. Now, you've all closed them and opened them, but I want you to close your eyes again. Just close your eyes. And I want you to think for a moment. Something that you need desperately. What would change your life? How could you attain that? Would it be your sight? Would it be your hearing? Would it be that you could speak correctly? What would change your life? That you could walk straight? What would change your life? That you were given a better position? What would change your life? That your granddaughter would come home again? What would change your life? That your children would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? What would change your life? That your husband gets saved or your wife gets saved? And the next service we have, they would be here? Think about it. Think about it, every one of you. Every one of you have got a desire. Every one of you have got something that you need. Something that your heart desires. How many of you would like to pick up the phone tomorrow morning and someone at the end of the phone says, I have a position for you and I would like for you to start to work tomorrow. And I will pay you a handsome salary. How many of you? How many of you are saying I have nothing to do and I'm dying on the vine? God, give me something to do. How many? Now reach out. Don't open your eyes. Reach out to the aisle closest to you. To the aisle. To the aisle. For you see, Jesus is here, and he's always been here. Ask him for it. Ask him for it. Ask him out loud. Ask him for it. Ask him for it. Just reach out. He's passing you by. John, he's coming your way. Honey, he's coming your way. Susie, he's coming your way. He's coming your way. Debbie, he's coming your way. Johnny's coming your way. Marissa, he's coming your way. Melissa, he's coming your way. He's passing you by. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give that hope and desire to him. Now he's taking it. Now thank him. Thank him. Thank him, Alex, for he's heard your prayer. Thank him, Susie. Thank you, John. Thank him, Ruthie. He's heard your prayer. Thank you, Mr. Simon. He's heard your prayer. Thank you. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Precious, the blonde, the blonde, I don't know who you are, the blonde. He's answered your prayer. The answer's already there. Thank him for that. Thank him for that. Thank him for that. The two of you. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. He's here to meet your need. He's here to take 
the heartache from you. He's here to take the trouble from you. He's here. He's listened. He heard. He knows exactly what you've prayed and what you've asked for and what you've run from. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it right now. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. God, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. We live because of you. We live. And we live victoriously. We receive what we've asked for. Joanne, you got it. Ashley, you have it. You'll never go out of this place the same that you've come in. For God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, has just taken your burden and you've released it to him. Now don't ever take it back. So many times we go to the altar and we give it, but then we walk back down the aisle and we take it right back with us. Don't do that. He has taken your burden. Trust him. Now raise both hands and say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Fall in love with him. Tell him how much you love him. Fall in love with 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 him. him. Take the hand of the one next to you. Don't have to look at him. Just take the hand. And feel the love of Jesus. That's it, honey. That's it, honey. That's it, sir, in the orange shirt. That's it, honey, in the maroon blouse. That's it. That's it, Mr. Simon. That's it, Joe. That's it, everyone that I don't even know your name of. You've given it to him. He's taken it, and you've thanked him. Now, never take it back again. I like that laughter. I like that. I like that. I like that. We praise him. Where's our pianist? Can you come up and play something wonderful? It is a ministry of love. A ministry of love. Do you know love isn't selfish? Love never says, look at me. Love never blames the other and walks away thinking he's blameless. Love gives it all. Love gives it all. Never thinking about the return. Never selfish. Never unforgiving. Always there, always there, always. I watch Maeve, and before Russ can ever ask for a thing, she has it sitting in front of him. She knows his words before he even speaks. She knows his desires before he ever asks. And willingly, she gives without ever tiring she serves 
without ever wanting a payback. That's love. And the one that gave us that love has been here with us all through this camp. Every man and every woman, different shapes, different ages, different hair colors, they've come and they've given their love and they've given their wisdom. It's like buying a book for $5 and you take the book home and you wonder why you've spent it and you open the book and the book has all kinds of stories in it. Joanna told you about our book and she read through the book. It wasn't stories, it was my life. You may have paid for it, you may have not paid for it. But with Jesus... We pay everything for it. Do you know what we pay? Our heart. And he gives us back eternity, eternal answers, eternal love, eternal gifting, eternal strength, eternal life. How could we ever, ever, ever say thank you for any of that? Russ mentioned the fact that I wasn't 20 years old any longer. I wish I were, but I'm glad I'm not. I've lived 80 years, and I've lived them to the fullest, John. I've laid hands on the sick, and when this man called a few months ago and said, please come with us. Yes, I'll be there. I didn't say I'm 80 and I'm incapable. You're going to have to help me out of my chair. I didn't say any of those things. I said, yes, because I know that God has given us the goods regardless of what the age is. And then the next man that called was Pastor Benny Hen. Will you go with me to Toronto and Texas and Montreal and South Africa and East London? And I said, yes, yes, yes. I didn't say I can't walk so well and I can't see so well and I can't hear so well and I can't do so well because my God has made it all possible and I stand in front of you tonight a strong woman of God a strong woman of God and I love every second of it I love every chair being filled and the chairs outside of the tent being filled. And when you got the goods, people want the goods. And God, forgive us if we don't give what he's given us. My beloved, the spirit of God is in this house. And he has everything that you need. You just gave everything to Jesus. And by morning, many of the answers will be there. I want you to think about the words that you say. The words that you say bring life or death. I want you to think about the power that's in your hand when you lay hands on the sick they will recover when you speak to the dead they will raise when you look at a situation and say in the name of Jesus whatever is involved has got to line up with the word of God that's what you are you're a powerhouse Every one of you, young and old and in between, doesn't make if, if you're 20 or if you're 80 or 90 or 200, to 
does it make any difference? Today I went to lunch with a powerhouse woman that's probably only four foot tall and as cute as a bug's ear. And she just talked like a magpie through the whole thing. She ate everything that came her way. And what she couldn't eat, she put in a bag and took home. And then she took it in her house. And her house, it was beautiful. You could feel the spirit of the living God in that house. You could see it in the flowers. My God, it was life. It was life. We're life. And when we pass by a neighborhood, things have got to change. When we pass by a car on the highway, things have got to change. I remember chartering buses from here to Pittsburgh for almost nine years. Go into a Catherine Kuhlman miracle service. And everybody is saying, thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Lord for raising me and I would look out on the highway and the cars I would think would almost stop saying what is that that just passed our way the spirit of the living God Joanna the spirit of the living God that is deposited in the hillbilly And in the beautiful lady with the blonde hair. In the beautiful lady that writes books. In the handsome men. In the young women and the old women. He has deposited in us his spirit. If you think that's not big, think again. When God Almighty spoke. And he said... Let there be light. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. What happened? Oh, my shoe. He didn't do it. God did not do that. The Holy Spirit did that. Holy Spirit did that. Light became a reality. Let there be trees. God didn't do that. Holy Spirit did that. It's not going to hold. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back over here to the seat. I can take these things off in a heartbeat and walk barefoot. My precious, God did not do that. God spoke into existence the worlds. But the Holy Spirit did it. God's Holy Spirit. And when Jesus Christ, we'll just take him off. When Jesus Christ lost his life right here on earth, do you know? Do you know who raised him from the dead? The Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. I want every eye glued on my mouth. When Jesus died and he was gone for three days in a tomb, the word of God said, and on the third day, the Holy Spirit, Alex, God's home. to Jesus and he rose from the dead and in that moment he conquered all sickness he conquered all death eternal life was given to us at that moment and guess what God has trusted you and me with his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit. 
Put your arms around your chest. God's spirit has been entrusted inside of you that as you go into the darkness, the darkness must change into light. And as you go into the sickness, the sickness must change to wellness. And as you go into the dead, the dead must change to life. And if you go into the poverty, as you go into the disagreements, as you go into anything that has come against you, God's spirit, God's spirit is alive in you. You need not look one second farther that's the spirit of the living God that has brought you here tonight that radiates life inside of you is there anything impossible not on your life the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you close your eyes and think about that close your eyes and think about that have you ever been given a gift from your boss like that have you ever been given a gift from Santa Claus like that? Have you ever been given a gift from your mom and dad like that? Have you ever been given an award like that? Have you ever in your life? No. The only one that could give you such a gift is our Father God in heaven. His spirit, his spirit, Maeve, his spirit lives big inside of me and you. The spirit of the Lord is on you. The spirit of the living God is in you, in you, in you, in you. What does he call of you? Everything. What has he restricted you? Nothing, nothing. What has he brought to you? Everything, 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 everything. This could be the service that everyone goes home healed. This could be the service that every need is met. This could be the service, the last one of the year, that the greatest miracles of all. This could be the service that no man goes home empty handed. This could be the service. This could be the service. Yes, I believe it is. I believe this is a service. And we give our praises to you, Father God. We give our praises to you. We give our praises to you. And we thank you, our Lord and our God. We thank you. We thank you for the reeds and the Marias and the Annies and the Patties and the Alex and the Ruthies. We thank you for the Rogers and the Sammies. We thank you for the Marissas and the Melissas. We thank you, Father God, for the Maves and the Russes. We thank you, Father, for we possess God's Holy Spirit in Jesus 
mighty and wonderful name. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Someone with a broken neck has just been healed. Your neck was broken and there's great pain. God has just healed you. Where are you? Where are you? You were in an accident, something, a fall, something happened and it broke your neck. Where are you? Don't ever grieve his spirit. Move your neck, move your neck. Move your neck. Move your neck. Are you okay, precious? How's your neck? Good? How's your neck, lady in the striped blouse? How's your neck? How's your neck, Miss Hillbilly? It's good? How's your neck over there? How's your neck? Good? Good? Is it good? It's good? Move your neck. Move your neck. Move your neck. This is a serious accident, and God has healed you. And you're never going to have that difficulty again. Your back can't function. Your hips can't function. You can't function because of that injury. And now it's gone. And now it's gone. Receive it in Jesus' name. There are many of you. Receive it, precious. Receive it, precious. It's yours. It's yours, honey. It's yours. It's yours. Look at me, honey. Look at me. It's yours. It's yours. It's over. It's done. And it's finished. God's spirit is upon you. It's over and done and finished. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful. Come on up here. Bring her up here one minute. Bring her up here. God, I give you praise. God, I give you praise. God, I give you praise. Wow. 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 Herschel. Herschel. God, I give you praise. Thank you for being here. God. God. That's the spirit of the living God on you. Stand behind her, Herschel. Now take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Again. Now jump. 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 Move your move your head. Move your head. Bend down and touch your toes. Now run around this auditorium. You could not do that like that before, could you? All right, run around. Run around. Since she was nine, what happened when you were nine? I fell off my bicycle. I, I, nothing happened to my neck, but I injured my hips and my lower back. Yeah. Have you been in pain long? Forever, yeah. Since you were nine, and now you're 30. <laughs> Jump, 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 jump. Stand up on the platform. Stand up on the platform. Now jump off, honey. Jump off. She would not have done that yesterday. I hear you're a worship leader. Sing something.
Wonderful. Give her a great big God bless. Do you know when the Holy Spirit told me about this? Do you know when the Holy Spirit told me about this? At six o'clock this morning. He spoke to me. I told May. I told Russ. There's going to be one there. He talked to me about her. She couldn't do that before. Look at that. Hear that? Hear that? Herschel. Herschel. Stand over here. You stay right here. The same anointing that God has allowed me is on you. It's always been there and it's always been for sure but lay your hands on the sick and they will recover lay your hands on the dead and there will be many of those shortly and they will raise from the dead and speak life and life will enter them You've just begun, young man. You have no idea where you're going to be. It's in the sausage factory for a minute. <laughs> but God is going to cause you to travel the world and heal the sick and raise the dead. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise and I give you thanks. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus, glorious night. Glorious night, Ashley. Glorious night. Glorious night. The last night of the camp. You know he saves the best for the last. Do you know when you eat a meal, they say save your fork. The best is yet to come. The best is tonight in the name of Jesus. All collective, all of the men and women that have deposited in this place, all comes together tonight. And every word that's been said and every promise that's been made and every prophecy that's been given is being recovered and tonight established. Tonight. 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 I can't believe you, Herschel. Herschel, I can't believe. I'm seeing what God is going to do with you. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Take the sausages with you. Whatever you have to do. Herschel, <laughs> you walked in that place and he changed your life and he's showing you a bit by bit by bit by bit. It's a giant step as the man got out of the spaceship and got on the moon. You are led by God's spirit. And you are obedient. And you are a treasure. And what your hands touch will be blessed in Jesus' name.
and what your mouth speak will change the atmosphere. God bless you. Not many does he trust with those gifts. I don't know why he would trust you. <laughs> but he has. He has. He has. He has. Break it to your wife gently. We're not going to point her. We're not going to look over there. You've got to tell her. You've got to tell her. <laughs> She'll believe you. <laughs> She'll think I'm old and hallucinating. <laughs> no, she would never. Oh, my gosh. Okay, meet Herschel Simon, the mightiest man of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And he's going to lay hands on you. She's going to lay hands on you. Every time they're with you, they're going to lay hands on you. Watch and see, watch and see. Everybody write a diary and write a diary about your own lives because God's spirit is inside of you. Give them a great big God bless you. 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 Thank you so much. Now jump and run. Jump and run. Do you know when you look in the Word, and last night I was awake most of the night, and I'm saying, God, what is it that you want me to share? What do I have? What do I have? Do you know there's nothing new in the Lord? There's nothing new. It's all been done. It's all been said. A million, billion, trillion, gazillion times it's been done. And when he told me, it was about 7.35 on the way over here. I had bookmarked and written down a few notes. And he said, Joan, tell them what you know best. And that's what we're going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Honey, you can stop if you'd like now, if you will. Thank you, but don't go far. Don't go far. You've already been announced that I am almost 80, and I am giving myself a surprise birthday party, and I'd like to invite all of you. <laughs> so don't forget it, okay? I'm not going to tell you my size, but I'll tell you smells I like, and I'll tell you colors I like, but I'm not going to tell you what size I wear. Ashley just went back to the store because this size didn't fit, and I knew the tags had been marked wrong. So she's been shopping all afternoon for something, and we go, just a bit bigger, just a bit bigger. And they're saying, well, maybe you better go to another store because this store doesn't carry that size. And we're going, oh, no, oh, no. I've been married for many years, so many years. I was the most beautiful bride with the wrong dress that walked down the aisle. I gave my husband $2 for the marriage license, and he talks about that ever since. And he's never paid it back. <laughs> but when you meet Frank in October uh, at the grand, grand dinner and celebration that we're going to have for 15 years, you'll understand him and the two bucks. I want everybody to remind him about giving it back with a few little pennies of interest. We've got two children here and two in heaven.
beautiful babies, but Jesus wanted them there. You know how hard that is to give up? You go through nine months, and all of a sudden, it doesn't happen. You go home without your baby. Hard times. Frank has done everything that he could do with me. I've come home with a gallbladder hole in my stomach that he had to suction out and clean out, and he's had to change the underneath pads because something leaked and we didn't understand what it was, and he's had to bandage and replace and dress me and walk me and... You know, Joanna, it's I do for better or worse. And you know what? I've done the same for him. All right? I'm his heart. He's my heart. And we've given ourselves to each other. And you know he hasn't got much of an education. I don't have much of an education. I'm Italian. I'm a Palermo. How many knew I was a Palermo? How many knew? Everybody thinks I'm a, a, a Jewish woman. They think I'm a, a Jewish grandma. I'm not. I'm Italian. From Palermo. From Palermo. And my name is Palermo. Yeah, okay? He's helped me every step of the way. And it's almost 60 years we've been married. Can you believe it? 60 years? I've never had another man. I've never been married before. I don't have anyone to compare him with. I can't say he used to do that and you don't do this. And I can't say any of those things. I love him for who he is. For many years, I tried to change him to be just like me because I was perfect. <laughs> well, it didn't work. It did not work. He was a mechanic, and every day he'd come home for lunch, and I would get to see him, and he'd run in, and he'd run out, and then we had babies within a year. There's that bus again. Is that bus dropping off people or picking? Will he wait? If he doesn't wait, you're all going to have to catch a ride home. Take the partner next to you and say, you got to drive me home. Oh, he's going. Oh, he's going. He's bye-bye. He's history. Bye-bye. Okay. Where did he come from? 600 miles away. I hope not. I hope not. We did everything together, everything together. And one day... I was helping my little boy, and Frank was at school, and I reached down to get something Michael had dropped, and when I stood back up, I was blind, a perfectly good woman, blind, couldn't see, couldn't see, couldn't. It scared the bejiggers out of me. I asked Michael to get the phone. You know, we only had those phones with the rotary dial on it, you know, those old clackety clack things he pulled the phone over to me he was only two years old and I called my mom and I said mom I can't see get here right away well she was there in two and a half minutes and blamed everything on Frank <laughs> she said you were perfectly wonderful when you got married and now look at you you can't even see a good Italian mother, they would do something like this. Never take the blame for your own kid. Well, so I went down the street, and they took me to the doctor, and he sent me to another doctor, another doctor, another doctor, another doctor. And for a week, I was going from one to the other, and finally the doctors put me in the hospital and said I had hemorrhages behind both eyes, and the optic nerve was swollen into the brain. I was sick, and they didn't think I was going to live. Now, here you take a perfectly good woman. She stoops over one day, can't see anymore, and now the next week you're dying. Have any of you ever experienced anything like that? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Maybe you think that you haven't. 
Maybe it's been with them coming to cut your electric off or they're foreclosing on your house or another tragedy. And you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. And from that day on, I searched. I never missed a Sunday at my Lutheran. Can you imagine? I'm Palermo, and I'm not Catholic. I'm Lutheran. I never missed a Sunday all of my life. I had a pin, perfect attendance, that I never missed a Sunday. My brother and sister did the same thing. And now this perfect attendance woman is in the house dying. I went from hospital to hospital, hospital. Nobody could figure it out. Nobody could figure it out. They didn't know what to do. The sight would come and go and come and go. Our little boy, I could take care of him, and I couldn't take care of him. And one day I found myself eating cold mashed potatoes from the night before someone had brought over because I couldn't fix anything or stand at the stove, Joanna. I was a mess. I cried all the time. I never got out of a granny ground. And do you know the Jesus I saw on the cross? I couldn't even think about anything about him but him on the cross or him in the manger. Do you know what I had overlooked? Him in my heart. He wasn't real to me. He was on the front of St. Jacoby Lutheran Church. He was up. He, he was on that cross that was nailed to the wall at the church. I couldn't think about anything else except him in the manger and this little baby, but I never knew he could heal me. Sick for four years. And one day I took Michael to school, my little son, first day. And there was a lady there, and she helped me up the steps, and she put me in a chair, and she was all giggly, and her kids were all giggly, and... I told Michael I would wait for him outside. He was only going to be there till noon. And in a few minutes, the teacher brought him out and said, you're going to have to take Michael home. He's sick. He's going to throw up. I said, Judy, I can't go anywhere. I'm locked in here. I can't drive anymore. She brought Michael out. And here's that young lady that brought me up the steps and giggled with her little kids and said, I overheard, I'll take you home. It took 20 minutes to take me home. And from the time she got me in the car, she started talking about her friend that didn't know Jesus but knew, but needed Jesus. And she said, Jesus is right here. All you have to do is accept him. And I kept saying, well, what did she do then? Well, she just accepted him. Well, how do you accept Jesus? She said, I just asked her to ask Jesus in her heart while she's talking I'm doing that inside of me and Ruthie Jesus became real to me within those 20 minutes I was still blind I still needed help to walk I still needed help to get in that house but I called my family and I said I just met Jesus as my Lord and Savior I'm saved, I'm saved. And they said, just sit down, lay down, don't make a move. You've been in the wrong crowd. You know when your kids get in the wrong crowd with drugs or alcohol or... Sit down, you've been in the wrong crowd. The pastor came, my mom came, my grandpa came, my husband came. They all agreed. I had been waylaid by some goofy old woman. At night, when Frank went to bed, I'd call Annie. Her name is Annie Richard. I'd call her at night, and I'd say, Annie, tell me more about Jesus. I never missed a Sunday in Sunday school, never missed a Sunday in church. I was there every time the church opened. I was the one that ironed the scarves on the altar and the robes for the pastor and had him over every Sunday for chicken dinner, and I didn't know Jesus. I knew good. I was good. I was the best woman in the church. Well, at least I think I was. 
I was one of the nicest women you would have ever met. I always was cheerful, but here I am now. They're saying I'm going to die, and I don't know Jesus. And within 20 minutes, Alex, Jesus Christ became real to me. The same Jesus that we worship tonight. The same Jesus that we ask into our heart. The same Holy Spirit that just resurrected every one of us from whatever we're not doing to whatever we're doing. My life started, I couldn't see. I was still in a mess. But everybody that came to the house, I told them about Jesus. My husband started calling me a fanatic. My mother said that I was hallucinating. The pastor said that I got wound up with some soothsayer or some witch. And I said, she's a member of your church. (laughs) How do you figure this one out? He told me I was walking down the wrong path. I said, the only path I knew was to Lutheran school, Lutheran church. The only one I ever knew, I never took any other path, never went to any other church, never did anything, never prayed with anybody else, never did. What? And then I started seeing without seeing. That church didn't have any more people than when I began when I was a baby. And now the old ones were dying. And the only ones that wanted the front row were those that couldn't see or couldn't hear and had to be close to the pastor. And that was only a couple of them in the church, but everybody was in the last row because they had to get out of the church to get the chicken on by noon. Wonderful men. You know, one day the preacher told me to go to hell. He got so fed up with me not being able to see, not being able to do the things that I used to do for that church. But always talking to him about Jesus, he said, stop it. Don't talk about it anymore. Just go to hell. Do you know I met that guy for the last four or five years at my Christmas party when we give to the homeless and the needy? And that guy looks like a homeless bum. That guy looks like a man that has never had anything. That man is as crazy as you can get it. And I feel bad for him. I feel bad for him. I feel bad for him because he's never gone from point A to point B. When are you going to learn It's not in the theology books. When are you going to learn? When are you going to learn Jesus is real? When are you going to learn Jesus is alive? When are you going to learn the spirit of life is inside of you? When are you going to learn that you don't have to tolerate with the horror of the country of the world? Because we live on a higher plane. Do we reach down in the gutter? Yes, every day. Every day. Do we help those in need? We feed them every day. I have 10,000 square foot and it's filled with food and shoes and underwear. I love underwear and socks. No man goes out of my place without a clean pair of underwear and a pair of socks and food in his gut. I'm telling you, I fill those bellies up. Love every minute of it. Well, I finally had to leave my church. Do you know why? Because one day I had heard this lady say, Hello there. Have you been waiting for me? It's Catherine Coleman. Oh, I shut her off the second day. I heard the same voice. Shut her off third day. I heard the same voice and I couldn't get to the radio or something and I just listened they said this is coming to you from the Catherine Kuhlman Foundation in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania I immediately called Frank and said Frank Jesus is in Pittsburgh I want you right now to come home and get me to Pittsburgh well it took him six months six months I called a lady that had MS and was blind and hadn't taken care of her four kids for years. And I invited her to come with me. And so Frank 
had a lady that had a bowel and bladder problem in the back seat of his new car and me blind and I couldn't see him going on. And he had a mess on his hands. And when we got there at midnight, there was 10,000 people standing all the way out in the street and up the steps and all over the church. And he's saying, how am I even going to get you there? It took him six months to agree to take me. I sat there, not sat there, I stood there all night long. Shirley was in a wheelchair around in another side of every once in a while I yell at her. And when the doors opened, my beloved, I was rushed in with everybody else. It was like I wasn't even walking on my own. And I sat down almost in the last row and a light came on my head, light. And I've got my eyes closed and I'm saying to Frank, Frank, there's a light on my head. Honey, tell him to turn it off. I feel illuminated. He said, Joan, honey, there's no light on your head. Open your eyes. I said, I don't want to open my eyes. I just want you to know that there's a light on my head and tell him to turn it off. He said, Joan, there's no light on your head. Open your eyes. And I opened my eyes and Alex, I could see. Pretty perfect. Pretty perfect. And a lady came by, tall, thin, beautiful lady named Maggie, Maggie Hartner. And she looked in and she said, Is anything happening here? I said, Well, yes, I couldn't see, but now I can see. She said, Let's go up and tell Kuhlman. I said, Come on, Frank. She said, No, don't count me in on this one. I said, I'm going. So I got up and I went with the lady and I hear this little voice behind me. Hey, honey, I'm right behind you. Two by two. I got up there. Catherine Kuhlman prayed for another man and she just looked at me and said to me, oh, the glory on that husband. can that be? I'm the good one. How can this be? Oh, and Frank goes, Pshew. they get him up. Pshew. He goes down three times. Never talks to me. She never talked to me. We got off the platform, went back to the seat and everybody's smiling and laughing and hugging. And I hear her say, Maeve, will you give me some Kleenex here, honey? This one's drippy. And I hear Catherine Coleman say, honey, honey, you in the wheelchair, you in the wheelchair. And listen, don't worry about going home to get anything to eat because we're going to be here a long time. I got a lot to tell you and I'm not going until I get it done. And Russ and Mavers taking everybody out for dinner. Artificial respiration right now. Give it to him. <laughs> so we're in the back of the church. I hear her say, honey, you in the wheelchair. Honey, you in the wheelchair. And I said to Frank, I think she's talking to Shirley. That's my friend we brought in the wheelchair. He said, no. I said, yeah, and we stand up just to look, and honey, come on up here. N no, I can't walk. I have multiple sclerosis 15 years. I knew that was my Shirley. Honey, you can walk. Get up. Get up, honey. Get up. Get up. The power of God, I'm, I'm switching here, but the power of God is so strong here that whatever you come in this building for, you will not go out with unless you deliberately want to take it back with you. God is here healing anyone that wants to be healed. And Julie said, no. And she said, honey, you can get up. Come on, just get up. Come on, get up, get up, get up. And all of a sudden, Catherine Kuhlman walks over to her and takes her by the hand and lifts her up. And Shirley starts walking. And then Kuhlman lets go of her and she starts running and running and running and running and running and running. 
and now the service is over and we're getting in the car and we're starving and Shirley said I want a steak this big and I want a baked potato that big and I want a piece of cherry pie that big because she had eaten baby food for the last six years that's what we took in her suitcase baby food couldn't digest anything or swallow anything that was whole When we got home, I'm saying, Frank, I'm going to call everybody I know. And tomorrow is Sunday. Yes, what's happening? She's out of the wheelchair? Oh, my God. He's out. Of, oh, my God. He's out of the wheelchair. Oh, Father, we praise you. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Come on. Herschel, get up. Get up. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, my God. Thank you, Father. Do you know who this is? God, I give you praise. God, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for healing him. I thank you for these legs walking. I thank you, Father, for development. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Thank him. Stretch your hands to him. Turn him around. Walk him. Walk him. Walk him. And then let go of him that he can walk. Go. 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 You brought him. He's brand new young fellow in our church. Just newly saved and water baptized two weeks ago. I've seen him stand before, yes. but not walk. Not walk. She's never seen him walk. The man's walking. Do you understand? Do you understand? Thank you so much. My God, my God, my God, my God. Wow, wow, wow. Look at this. Just let him sit down on the front row. Give him a front row seat. Bring him back up. And that's only a beginning. How do you like the beginning? Wow. Wow. Look at this. He's picking up his legs. He's picking up his feet. man. Look at this man. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to do. He's weeping like a child. He never saw himself walk like that. Wow. Wow. Oh, thanks for interrupting the meeting with that miracle. Look at this. Look at it. I want you to look at it. I hope you cameras are getting this. I Take your cameras off of your pods and get them out of here. And they, you can televise this. People all over the world need to see these things. What's he saying, Maeve? What's he saying? I told you, brother. Who's he saying that to? The brother that brought him? Is that the brother? No, the lady brought him, but he's saying, I told you. He told that man he was going to walk? 
Honey, did you? He said he just doesn't know what the hell happened. I'm telling you, mister, the spirit of God is on you. That's what happened to you. The greatest power any of us will ever know. What a night this is. What a night this is. What a night this is. What did he say, Maeve? What? That was for me. You felt it. You felt him heal you. You felt him heal you. What did you feel, precious? Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you? Can I? Can you talk? Give him a drink of water. He's overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed. This is a big, do you know, my God, I, this auditorium is going to be a stadium with tens of thousands of people in it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, Maeve. Look at this. I don't even know what to ask you. I'm in love with you. That's all I know. <laughs> what did you feel? What did you feel? My legs were shaking. <laughs> and I just, I felt the spirit of God in me. <laughs> what did that feel like? <laughs> he said, son, walk. You're free. Wait, wait, wait. He said, son, walk. What? You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. Yes. You're free. Son, walk. You're free. Russ, what if you hadn't heard the voice of God? What if you hadn't? labored through all of these years to get where God has asked you to be? What if you'd have said no? What if you said, no, I will never go to Canada. No, I want to stay in my own comfort zone. No, I don't want to do that. Russ, if this is the only one, it's worth your life. <laughs> Alex, you're never going to be the same. You're never going to be the same, Alex. We're never going to be the same. Son, write that down. Patty, write that down and put that on the top of your bulletin. The top of your bulletin for your next bulletin and your next Sunday thing, if you don't have it already made up. What did he say? Son, walk. You're free. Son, walk. You're free. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen all over the world, if you're watching this on the Internet or you're watching this over whatever you call it, I don't know any of those goofy things, the Internet or whatever it is, I'm telling you God is real. There are no magic powers in this room, but the greatest one that's not magic but is forever and eternity, Jesus Christ, God's spirit is here. Rise and walk. Rise and walk. You're free, sister. You're free, sister. You're free. This is fabulous. How do you top that? You can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. How much did it cost us to be here? How many years has it taken us? It's worth it. All, oh, Melissa. It's worth it all, young people. It's worth it all, moms and dads. It's worth everything. Sir, come up.
up here. You. No, no. You. Right here. You. No, you, honey. The good-looking guy in the plaid shirt and the white pants. Yes. And I thought I saw garters on your socks, did I? Oh, I'm glad. Oh, I hate garters. I'm so glad. Come here. Stand in front of me. Stand in front of me. Come here. Herschel. Herschel. I don't know who you are, but I know that you're a great man of God, but you've not given it all. And God is showing you and going to show you and take you in places you could never believe or never be. And you're going to lay hands on the sick and you're going to raise the dead every day for the rest of your life. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. God, I give you praise. 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 Herschel, I don't know who those two people are next to you. It, the blonde and the other man. Okay, I don't know him, but bring him up here. Immediately come. Immediately come. Yeah, whoever are next to you. Those are who? Okay, come up here. Come up here. Come on, honey. Come up. Come up. Come up. Quickly, quickly, quickly. What a beautiful couple they are. She is absolutely stunning. I don't know who you are. Forgive me for being barefoot, but my shoe just broke. And I couldn't walk on one shoe. Come up here, sir. Come up here. My, do I have a lot to say. Forget who you think you are. Forget who you think you are. For tonight, a new life comes upon you. And you will change. And you will not even recognize, nor will people recognize, who you've become. For you are children of God. You are among many, none bigger or better, but all surrendered. Surrender that he can use you to your fullest potential. In Jesus' name, you have no idea what he's going to do with you. You've hung around the wrong crowd. That's here. Now, he's going to change your life. And I'm only kidding about the wrong crowd. God bless you, sir. And now you will become all that he's created for you to be. Because you've never reached that yet. And you never could without him. Father, I ask you to give them such a hunger that it's unquenchable from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And give me your hands. Give me your hands. Give me your hands. Give me your hands. God. God, they will prosper. They will prosper. And they will feed the poor. They will feed the hungry and the widows and the orphans. God. 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 Be the best husband you can. He's given you a wife. She's your treasure. The rest of your life will be what it's supposed to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. Father, Father, again a deep breath. That's the power of God on you, sir. The power of God on you. Okay. Okay. Say thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. What nationality are you? Italian. You're Italian. <laughs> From where? My, my father was uh, born in Bagadilla, right outside Palermo. Yes, right outside of Palermo. The most mafioso in the whole world. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You're, you, you are a delight to him. You are a delight to him. Help her up. Help her up. Help her up, precious. Gently, gently. And I pray, Father, a marriage that is just begun. An understanding of you, Father. And you will serve him together in love. He's opening up the world for you. God bless you. God bless you. No thanks to me. Only to him. Palermo. Okay. Do you pick? Do you cook Italian? But you can take me to a fine restaurant, right? Absolutely. <laughs> or do you cook? You cook. They fix me. We eat. We eat. Ma mancha. Mancha. All right? <laughs> Okay, he's going to take us out to dinner tonight, not Russ. God bless you. Give him a great big God bless you, will you? And so we came home from... <laughs> you didn't think I would remember where we were, did you? Here I am, I can see, and here is Shirley, and she can walk. She's out of the wheelchair. We threw the wheelchair in the back of the car, and we zoomed home. We couldn't wait to get to the church the next morning when we got there. We ran up the steps, and the door opened, and the pastor said to me, How dare you do what you've done? I said, What do you mean? He said, you've given these people false hope and you've taken her to a witch. And she will die and so will you, just like the doctor said. My husband was there. Richard was there, Shirley's husband. Richard couldn't say anything because he didn't believe it. He wasn't with us. He didn't see. He didn't know. He didn't know. Frank said, my wife is not going to die. My wife is going to live. My wife is going to live. God healed her. And Richard didn't say a word. And within six months, Shirley was dead. Can you imagine a pastor saying those things? But why not? Why not when you don't know anymore? It's not by the theology books. It's not by the graduations. It's not by the degrees. It's not by the paycheck. It's not by, it's by the spirit of the living God. Do you think I could have gotten that man out of that wheelchair and made him walk? I wouldn't have done that. The spirit of God got him out of that chair and he walked. And I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, Joanne, that I was called as something and I didn't even know about a call and didn't know about the something. But I've followed him ever since and I've learned the word and I've eaten the word and I've taken it in my heart and I've understood the word and he's allowed me to understand it simply, not confusing. I can't go from the Bible from the front to the back and weave a sermon together like brilliant men can. But I can tell you the truth. I can tell you how many countries I've been in and how many people we've prayed for. I can tell you how many people were saved. I can tell you how many people's lives are changed. I can tell you how I felt the Spirit of God, how I heard Him, how I smelled the Holy Spirit. I smelled the fragrance coming across the congregation. And as He moved, everybody was healed one by one by one by one by one. Yes. Glory be to God. 
Glory be to God. I'm going to give you a simple illustration that I've shared with you before, but I'm going to do it one more time. Because I think it is the simplest thing and way the way to understand. And this comes in the 14th chapter of Matthew. If you got your Bibles, you can turn to it. If not, just listen to it, read it when you go home. And maybe that's the best. 14th chapter of Matthew, it says, And Harold uh, Antipas heard about Jesus, and he said to the advisors, This must be John the Baptist that has come back again. That is why he can do the such miracles that he does. For Harold has arrested and imprisoned John as a favor to his wife, Herodias, the former wife of Harold, the brother of Philip. And John kept telling Harold, it is illegal for you to marry her. Harold would have executed John, but he was afraid of a riot because of all the people that believed in John, and he was a prophet. But at a birthday party for Harold, Herod's daughter performed a dance that greatly pleased him, and so he promised with an oath that he would give her anything she wanted. At her mother's urging, the girl said, I want you to behead John. I want you to give me the head of John. I want you to give me John the Baptist's head on a tray. Can you imagine that, ladies and gentlemen? The king was sorry, but because of the oath and because he didn't want to back down in front of all of his guests, he issued the necessary orders. So John the Baptist was beheaded in prison. And his head was brought on a tray and given to the girl who took it to her mother. John's disciples came for the body and they buried it. And then they told Jesus what had happened. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he went off by himself in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed, and they followed by land from many villages. A vast crowd was there as he stopped from the boat, and as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion. Do you know what Maeve Moyer and Russ Moyer have? Compassion. Whether you're old or whether you're young, today we went to lunch with Maria. She wasn't 20. Her and I share the same, pretty much the same age. I see him going to meeting after meeting after meeting and tired or going through whatever he's going through. He's here to teach you. They're here to give you the word of God. They're here to check on you. How are you? They're interested in the poor. They want to know, have you got the food? Have you got the clothes? Have you got the shoes? They want to know about every bad branch of the ministry, the ministry that God has given them. And he hasn't kept it for himself. She hasn't kept it for herself. They've shared what God has given them. Joanna, you do this. You do this, Renee. You do that, Marissa. You do that. You do this, honey. You do that, honey. You do this. You take over this. You take charge of this, Denise. You take charge of this. I give you authority over that. I give you authority. Let me teach you, Corinne. Let me show you. Here you do that. Every avenue of what God wants us to know is covered in this ministry and taught 
by the, do you think that doesn't take time? I watch Maeve scrambling eggs, washing the dishes and on the phone and telling them to feed 40 people or change this or get that literature out. I see Brother Russ picking up the telephone and encouraging people. They were moved by compassion on the people and the people were healed. That's Jesus. They're Jesus in the flesh. They're Jesus in the flesh. They're walking around, touching the sick, encouraging those that are lost, helping those that need help. And that evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place, and it is getting late. Send all these people away. Thousands of people came to be healed. Thousands of people came to be touched. And they're saying, send them away. Send them away. Jesus, forget about this. We can't do this anymore. They got in a boat to leave after they buried the body of John. And now they are besieged with all of these thousands of people. And Jesus goes, what? What? Have you followed me these years? Have you watched every move? Have you left what you had behind? Have you watched what has happened? Have you seen the bread multiplied? Have you seen the multitude fed? Have you seen the dead raised and the sick healed? What are you saying? It isn't necessary to turn them away. Give them, sir, what they have come for. They came to be healed. They're healed. Send them away. No. We got to feed them. We got to take care of the whole thing. If you go to Maeve's house, you're never going to go out hungry. If you go to Corinne's house, you're never going to go away hungry. If you go to Joanne's house, they're going to give you the word of God, but they're going to pray for you, and they're going to feed you. Don't send them away, Jesus said. Give them what they came for. Give them what they came for. What are you talking about, Jesus? There's nothing here. There's no Kentucky Fried Chicken. There's no pizza parlor. What the world are you saying? There's nothing here to feed these people. How can we do that? And he said, has anyone seen any bread at all? Now they start thinking. Yeah, we saw a little kid with a basket of bread. We saw him with a few fishes, but his mom baked the bread for him and a little pita bread and roasted the fish for him. And it's just laying over there on the side. He's only got two fish. He's only got five loaves of bread. Jesus said, bring it to me. Now, if you've never heard anything that any of the evangelists for this entire summer has ever said to you, I want you to take this home with you because this will change your life. Go get the bread, Jesus said. Go get the basket. Okay. One of them goes to get the basket. The kid gives it over. He don't give him any problem at all. He just gives him the basket of the bread and the fishes. And now this little basket comes out. How could, big could it be? Maybe the kid's 10, 7 years old. We don't know how old he is. Just a little kid. The mama gave him a basket of food. And Jesus calls his disciples. And he says, Thaddeus, come. Thaddeus, come. Come, Thaddeus. Come. Get up and come. Come on, that is. And he says, Simon Peter, Simon Peter, I want you to come. Come, Simon Peter. Come. Come, you, Simon Peter. Yes, come, you. Not you, him. <laughs> Simon Peter. Come, James. James, come on, come on, come on, come on, James. Come on, right, you, you. Come on in the front row, right, you, sir, with the blue shirt and the black pants. John, where are you? Oh, John, there you are. Come on up. Come on up, John. 
Jesus says, yeah, come on and come on up. And Andrew, where are you at? Andrew, Andrew, and there you are. Get up, get up, get up. You, yes, with the pocket full of something. <laughs> come on up. And Philip, Philip with the orange shirt. Philip, Philip, Philip with the orange shirt. Come on, come on, come on. And Bartholomew, where are you? Oh, there you are in the blue shirt on the front row. Come on, Bartholomew. Come on, come on. And Matthew, Matthew, where the world are? There you are with the hat on. Why have you got your hat on? Get your hat off and come up here. Okay, keep your hat on. That's okay. And Thomas, Thomas, where are you at? Thomas, oh, there you are in the white shirt up there in that booth. Come on down here, Thomas. And James, where are you? James, James, I can't even see you. James, yes, come on. Come on, you, you, you just scratched your chin. Come on up here, James. <laughs> and now we've got Simon. Where are you? Where are you? And then there's Judas. Where's Judas? Oh. <laughs> Judas. Oh, Judas, there you are. Come on up. Come on up, Judas. Come on up. Now watch this. Watch this. This is the key to the whole deal. Somebody move this out of the way. Where are you, Herschel? Yeah, you can. Okay. We've got one. We got one more. Come on up here. One more disciple. Come on. I don't know who. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's good. All right. Come on. Okay. Who got the basket of bread from the kid? Can you bring it over here to me? It didn't have sausages. It only had fish. Bring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Jesus takes the basket of five little pita breads. Have you ever eaten a pita bread? They're only about that big around. The kid, Mama, fixed two fishes. Two little fishes sticking their head out of the basket. And Jesus takes the basket of bread and fishes. And he lifts it. And he says, Father, bless it. No major 16-day fast, five-day prayer. Father, bless it. And then he takes the basket, puts it in his arm, and he says, come, Peter. Come, Peter. Come, Peter. And he gives him a half of one of the five loaves, and he says, feed my people. Don't send them away. Give them what they've come for. Come, Judas, here's the other half of the first loaf. Give to my people what they've come for. Bless you, come. Thomas, give to my people. Now it's the second loaf. It's a half of it. Bless it, bless it, and give it to the people. Feed my people. The second half is gone now. The whole one, two are gone. Now you take some of this bread. Bless my people. Come here. And the other half of the bread, bless my people. The other half, feed my people. Feed my people, John. Feed my people, James. Feed my people, Peter. Philip, feed my people, Thaddeus. Matthew. And the last two things left were the fish. 
feed my people, bless them. And you, here's the other fish, bless my people. Now go do it. Go do it. Now I want you to remember what's happening here. Herschel, put this back up here. Put this back up here. Five minutes before they just walked away with the bread and the fish, they said, Jesus, send them home. There's nothing to eat here. There's no McDonald's. There's no Kentucky Fried Chicken. Russ Moyer isn't there. He's not going to feed them tonight. Send them home. Send them home. Send them home. Jesus said, what are you talking about? What have you seen? What have you watched my life do? I've never sent anyone home. I've given them what I've what they've come for. You give them what they've come for. Look what's happening. All these disciples are feeding every one of these people. They only had a little pittance. They only had crumbs. And now God is multiplying it. The fishes. Everybody's got fish here. Look at the fish. Everybody's got bread here. Everybody's been served bread. Who is multiplying the bread and the fishes? It is not Jesus. It is the disciples. It is you yourself that is multiplying the bread. It is you that's answering the call of God. And the spirit of the living God will cause you to do everything that you've been asked to do. You've been asked to feed the hungry. You've been asked to clothe the naked. You've been asked to teach them the word. You've been asked to lay hands on the sick. You've been asked to stand in the pulpit and talk about Jesus. Where are the disciples? Come back. Where are you at? Come back. Come back. Come back. Jesus had said to the people, everybody sit down because you are in for a feast. Can you imagine Victoria eating that bread? Can you imagine what it tasted like? And Jesus didn't do it. He did it. Simon did it. He gave it to you. One second they said, Jesus, send them home. What are you talking about? There's no McDonald's. There's nothing. And we only found this basket with these few little loaves and these few little fishes. That's not going to go far. They're going to kill us. They're going to have a riot right here on the front row, and it's not even called Ferguson. (laughs) Jesus said, go feed my people. Jesus has said to you, you will overcome You will do the impossible. You will take my word. You will take my hands. You will take my oil. You will lay hands on the sick. You will multiply the food. You will give to the poor. You will give to the rich. You will give and you will love. You, Simon. Okay. He's gone. Okay. You do it. You bring joy to their face. You bring life to their bodies. You do it. You do it. You have the same spirit of God in you as Jesus Christ. 
You have the same spirit of God in you as the creator of all heaven and earth. Take that for granted. Take that for granted. And you'll never go anywhere. But take that for the truth of the word of God and you will go everywhere as far as you want to go. And I'm sorry that selfishness and greed got involved in that. And Judas took his own life and he hung and he fell to his death. And the disciples fed the people. What do you have there, precious? What have you got? What's that big basket? You've got a basket full? You've got baskets? Put them on the altar. Put them on the altar. Put them on the altar. There's enough to start a franchise here. It could be the Simon Sausage Company. (laughs) Did you get it? Did you get it? And about 5,000 men had eaten from the five loaves and in addition were the women and the children which surely was probably 20,000 people 20,000 people beloveds beloveds you close your eyes close your eyes say I have living inside of me the spirit of the living God. The spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead, living inside of me. I'm filled. I'm healed. I'll fulfill the call on my life. I give my life. I give everything in the name of Jesus. I am a Holy Ghost, man or woman of God, and I will make it, and I will live in eternity, and I will heal the sick, and I will raise the dead, and the food will multiply, and anyone that comes to me, I will bless. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now stand to your feet and give him a great big God bless you. Look at this guy on the front row just stood up. God bless you all. Thank you, Faith and Russ, for a wonderful camp. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in here. And may all your needs be met in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen and amen. What a wonderful night. Just lift your hearts to the Lord. Father, right now, just seal your blessing in the hearts of your children. Father, bless them physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. Father, bless their homes and their families. Wherever they go and whatever they do, let the love and the light of the Lord shine through them. Let your favor be upon them, and let your blessing go with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Make sure you give somebody a hug on the way out and let them know they're blessed. September the 7th, Paul Wilmer will be right here with a whole team that will be here blessing the nation of Israel.